All right, here's the design we are painting on this video lesson today. Um, it is titled Welcome to Our Nest, and my uh, video will show this particular piece that I'm painting on. And then at the end, I come back, I've painted everything onto this piece, and I show how to paint the bird on here. Um, this, this bird will be painted the same as that one, but I will show you step by step how to paint this bird. So if you want to enlarge it and put it on a bigger piece like I did, because I really love the birds on it once I added it on here, but everything else will be the same. So I can't wait to paint this one with you guys. Let's get started. We're starting this surface here and um, I've already applied one coat of multi-purpose sealer with my dampened artist sponge. I lightly sanded it and you can do the same thing with a brown paper bag. Wipe off any sanding dust and now we're ready to apply a base coat color uh, um, buttermilk on here with the same dampened artist sponge. I'm just going to brush it over the entire surface. I'm going to kind of tap it onto here and then lightly smooth it out, very gently smooth it out, because I don't want paint oozing down around all those intricate areas there. I want to keep my edges clean. And so we'll just bring this all the way down. let this get dry and we're going to apply something else on the top of this so once it dries if it, it feels like it has a little texture to it go ahead and lightly sand it again with a brown paper sack or with a very fine sanding pad all right we've got our uh, buttermilk dry that's the base coat that we put on here and so now I want to add some um, shine to this so I am going to use uh, DecoArc's Extreme Sheen. This is the color 24 karat gold. And so I'm going to use the same damp sponge here. And I'm just going to kind of lightly put some of this on here in the background. background just sparkle. Got a little bit more on this edge over here. This is such a, a very beautiful paint. I love it. It's going to be great for uh, detailing things, outlining things. And a little bit more right through there. Our pattern's going to cover up a lot of this in the center, so. Okay, that's going to give us some, some beautiful, beautiful shine in the background of this thing. And I might come up here and darken it up here a little bit later, but I'm going to wait till I get my design on and see what I want to do. So we're going to get this dry and get our pattern lines transferred on. Oh Well, this is dry and I've decided I want to um, do something a little bit different for the background here. So um, I have marked off with my T-square approximately two inches and we're going to tape off and paint this edge in. So when you're doing yours, if you just want to tape off and paint this side buttermilk and this side the blue and just add the gold over here, you can do that. I'm going to tape off up here as well. So it doesn't get up there on that. And then we're just going to paint in with Victorian blue, I think is the color I'm going to use. I have an 
enough of my bottle lens. I'm just going to grab an old flat brush to paint this in real quick. You can grab your artist sponge and use that. I'm going to make sure all the moisture is out of my my brush because I don't want water going underneath the tape. So I'm going to paint this edge in with the Wedgwood Blue. And we're going to do some stuff to the background. So I'm going to apply two coats of this on here. So I'm going to get this coat dry and get a second coat quickly on here. And we'll come back and we'll do some fun stuff to the background. We're not going to remove the tape until we get what we're going to do to the background done. So as this is drying, I'm not liking how dark it is. So I'm taking my um, artist sponge and I'm changing the color to shoreline. So. I'm just going to sponge this on here so much faster with a sponge. I rarely do any of my base coating with a, a paintbrush unless it's, you know, the detail base coating. But backgrounds, I don't usually use anything but a sponge. All right, so I am going to get this dry and apply a second coat on here. And then we'll come back and do our fun stuff. Okay, so now I want to add some uh, swirls over here on this area. See, I need to clean this stencil, but I'm not worried about it because I know if I take it to my sink and put some hand sanitizer on it, let it set for about 20 seconds, 30 seconds at the most, I can take a, a very soft toothbrush and it will all just wipe right off. Okay, um, this is a plaid stencil. I'm pretty sure I bought this at Michael's. Uh, let's see if it has a name. It just says swirl background. Okay, and I, I use this stencil a lot. I really like it. So I want to put some swirls over here in this blue area. And um, I'm going to use that darker blue that I was using over here. That uh, Victorian blue. And very lightly stencil this on with a makeup sponge. It will not take any time at all straight up and down pouncing. Make sure you stay within your your blue here, although we have that tape here, so if we go out past it, not a big deal. And we don't have to have these super dark, so don't worry about trying to make them super dark. We want a little bit more kind of subtlety in the background. All right, this one here in the middle needs a little bit more. I missed that one altogether. Let me see how that looks. Yes, I like that. That's nice and subtle. Okay, so now we can remove our tape. And I got blue paint over there. Not really sure how I did that. We're going to tape off this other edge. I do not know how I got that on there, but we'll just take it off. So we're going to tape off the, the top. We're not going to paint it, we're going to stencil it. And we'll tape off our blue. And here we're going to use the same stencil. Okay, let me cut the end of this off so we can grab some different paint here. I'm going to get a little bit darker gold color than we put on here. This color is vintage brass. It's a brassy gold. And we're going to take our stencil and lay it on here. And stencil some of this on here. Shake this up a little bit better. I might go ahead and put the 24 karat gold out. And I might just mix them on my sponge here. 
So I just picked up both, tapping them. Now, makeup sponges are not absorbent, so you've got to really work it in around on that sponge, away from the paint. It's going to have to be a darker color, so let me grab some antique gold. it to be kind of sparkly gold in the background but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make that so I'm just going to work some antique gold into that sponge it's, it's still got that other paint on it so I'm trying to keep my stencil from lifting up see where I've gone where I have it so I missed right here Nice little subtle background back there. Remove the tape and we'll let that dry. Now up here on the top we're going to tape off darken this up with that uh, that 24 karat gold so I think I want to put a little bit more of that on there and I'm just going to go ahead and use this makeup sponge and just tap some on here and try to make this a little bit darker gold you can brush it on too um, using a makeup sponge will probably give it a little bit of texture. So if you don't like that particular look, then you just want it to be more opaque than streaky like we had it in the background there. off and I think we are ready to put our pattern on now and get that ready to go okay I want my um, teacup to be a very pale blue so I'm going to take a little bit of this shoreline which is the base coat we put on here and I'm going to mix it in with my white to just tint my white a little bit blue So it gives the white just a little bit of a blue tint to it so that when we come back and add highlights and colors and things on here to it, it um, will show up our highlights and stuff. So I'm going to first apply a little bit more blue in there, uh, my coats on here, and get them dry. Now we're just going to do a little bit inside the teacup here because we're going to put that bird nest inside there. So we don't. Something in my paint there. Still in my paint. 
So just paint each thing separately, individually, so that you can um, tell where everything is. First coats are going to be the ugliest, and the we're not going to like them much, but. We got to get our base coats on just nice and smooth so that our layers that go on top of it will turn out beautiful. If you don't have a good undercoat, you won't have a very well painted project. So take your time. Don't rush it. If you have to put a third coat on there, do it. Don't just get you know, like I want to get to the, to the, you know, the painting that makes it pretty. We got to take great care with this base coating stuff. And I'm just using a tin flat brush, so whatever size brush that you like to use that will fit well within the, the area that you're painting. You don't want to go too small on your brush because if you do, then you are just going to work yourself to death trying to paint that in. All right, there's a little bit of the underneath showing here, so we'll paint that in. I'm going to put a little bit inside the cup. I'm not going to worry too much about this because our nest is going to cover it all up, but we kind of need to still kind of know where the cup is. So one coat in here is probably going to be enough. I'm going to get a round brush to finish the handle and then I'm going to let this dry and apply a second coat on here. So You want to make sure that it's got a nice um, tint to it. Where's a round brush when you need it? Never handy. mixing up a little bit for this brush. Get the handle in. Okay, so we can still see our lines, you know, where we put our lines to separate everything. So I'm going to let this get dry and apply a second coat, and I might need to apply a third coat to really cover up that background, but I'm okay with that. So if you need to apply a third coat, then do it. Just do each layer as well as you can. A little bit of paint, a little bit of water in your paint to thin it down will make it paint on there so much more smoothly than straight from the bottle. Okay, uh, I am going to begin with some Snow White on my tin flat brush. I'm just going to drag some down this side. We're going to make this side our highlight side. We're going to put some flowers on here, some subtle little flowers, because the bird nest is really our focal point. So I'm just touching at the edge of the cup and dragging, just barely letting the brush skim across the surface to create a little bit of brighter areas. I'm going to do the same thing from the bottom up. Just kind of let the paint just fade away as we get over here to this side. We'll make this our shadow side over here. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the plate. I'm going to come in from the edge.
I'll be more shadowed back in there, so I won't have to really add it back in there. So we're just touching the brush and flicking it and letting the paint just skim. I'm not loading a whole lot of paint in my brush, um, and I'm just barely touching. touched a lot. This is the edge right here. I'm just going to let the paint kind of fade away as we get on to this side. So that's our beginning there. All right, I'm going to do that a little bit more on this side. Brighten it up. And just kind of let, let it fade away over there. Need to do our handle as well. This is the bottom edge of the, the cup here. So I'm going to put a little bit along it. And just let it fade away. And then back out here to our outer edges. Dragging it in there. All right, and then less over here. pretty good. Let's do a little bit on the handle. Okay, we'll just do that kind of dragging thing again on the handle. need to put your pattern line in right there then go ahead and do it so you can tell where that turns up okay all right let's um, I think we're gonna add some little flowers on here some very small delicate little flowers on here so we'll get a one round for that a small brush that we can make some small little flowers with and all right so before we add some of our flowers in here. I want to create a little bit of a wash with some avocado green. So get some water in your brush and get a little bit of paint and mix it. I want to make this pretty sheer. So 
So lots of water. Okay. I'm going to touch my brush to my palette to remove all of that paint and water in there. Load it up. Touch the tip to a paper towel. It's going to pull some of that out. And then um, your pattern will be laid out for you, but since I'm designing here on camera, I'm not 100, always 100% 100 sure where I'm going to go with my design, so I'm going to lay some of this green in here. This is going to be like background underneath the, the flowers. Still got too much water in my brush here. And you can kind of make it look like there's some leaves or something coming off in some places. Load up, touch my paper towel, wick it out. And then just go in here and pat some in. Put some down here. A little bit over here. Maybe a touch there. Let's put some on the plate because it will have some of these flowers on it as well. I don't want it very dark, so if I feel like it's getting too dark, I'm just going to touch it back with my finger and remove some. So I can always come back and add more in here, but I can't take away, so let's put a little bit on our handle. All right. Let's do the same thing with some of our Victorian blue, which is the color we used out here. So you really want to thin that down with some water, just like we did the green. It's mostly water, not very much paint. Wipe your brush off, load it, touch your paper towel, let it wick out. And we're going to put some blue in here. Still a little bit too much water in my brush. Just put some around those green areas. Kind of going for an old look teacup here, but the teacup, like I said, is not our focal point, so don't get distracted by doing a lot of detail here. I have a big teacup and saucer collection that I started many years ago. Well, I wouldn't say it's big, I mean, it's big enough for me. So. I'm going to drag some of this color along the bottom here. Start creating our base there a little bit because we'll probably do some shading possibly with that color. Okay, so with that, that blue wash that we made, let's load our brush up with it. Now I've switched to my one round. I was doing all that little puttering there with... Um, four round. So now I've got my one round and we just want to come in here and add some some little flowers. Yeah, I might have to add a little bit more paint to that. So we have these almost like little violet flowers type things, daisies, whatever you want to make them. If you want to make them daisies, these are just five petal little little flowers. And I might do one that's just three or four.
kind of lay the brush down and let it leave a little mark. Bringing them all into the center if you can. some leaves with that avocado. That leaf, that flower right there is kind of big, so if you can keep them more on the smaller side. That would probably be best. something through there that's too big of an open open area there edges to it. And I went and removed the water out of my brush and then it took out too much. All right, let me try that again. Get some blue. little flowers in there. Ooh, way too much water there. Take the same small brush and take some of our thinned green and add a little bit more to the mix and just make some little petals, even those are a little bit too dark. We're making leaves here. Just little dabs, kind of like we did with the Mostly water. Just some little dibby dabs. Let me go throw a couple on there. There, that's good enough for the handle. Let's give a little dot in the center of these flowers, the 
tiniest little dot. So you want to use a detail liner, I think, for this. And just give them a little dot of white. And then we'll begin shading and highlighting. there. These are the tiniest little dots so don't make them very big. What are you getting off? Okay. Alright, that's going to finish out the flowers I think. So let's begin some shading on this cup now, and we're going to shade with our Victorian blue. So load your breath. First, up, first off, uh, spread your palette. Let me wide angle out so you can see this. Spread your palette with some water. That's clean water for you to use when you're floating, or anything where you were going to need some clean water. Generally, the water in your basin gets dirty. Um, I try to keep one half of my basin for clean water, but it still can get some, some uh, paint in it. And you don't want paint on the water edge when you're floating. So your brush is, is damp. It's loaded with water. So you're going to dip a corner into your paint. And you're going to work it in to that one corner of the brush. This edge right here is going to have the paint. Now I like to work it in with some water. Water and and uh, paint. So I've got a little bit, little bit too much water there. So what I'm going to do is go to my paper towel and lay my brush on my paper towel like this. It's going to wick out the excess water. Now I still need to have water. So I'm going to go right back here and load. And that's going to give me the right amount of water. And paint. So we're going to float on the left side. This is going to be our shadow side of our cup. We want a nice soft color here. Grab my mop brush. Try and get some of that choppy stuff out of there. I'm going to clean my brush a little bit there. I got a little bit of hard line there. I don't like it so all I'm going to do is take some water and dampen that paint a little bit and take the dry edge of my brush, clean that off, and come in with my white eraser and erase that really hard line right there that I did not like. Go back and load my brush and get some fresh paint out here. bottle is almost empty. I have to get me another bottle. Oh, okay. Oh, now it's probably really empty. Okay, really work that into your brush with that water to soften it. There we go, much better. Mop that. I'm going to come back and widen that float, but for now that's that's good right there. I'm going to come down here around the cup on the bottom of it. We're going to have it a little bit darker back in here so I can put a little bit of this paint back here and on this edge. This is almost this paint is almost as sheer as what we painted our flowers in with. So, um, you know, I really worked the paint in there so that I could have that sheerness in there. Okay. 
working the paint into your brush along with the water can get you a, a more sheer color. I'm going to tuck a little bit of this back here. And back here. That's going to be a little bit more shaded. Maybe right there. Kind of create a, a little bit of a shadowy area. This down here is going to be dark. Because that's the underneath of the cup. If you get too much water in your brush, just go lay it on your paper towel and clean it out. A little bit more paint. bring this over a little bit into the cup. I have to turn my fan off. It's really drying my paint way too fast. See, now I've got another hard line in there. too much about it up there on the, the edge of the cup because it's going to um, be covered with our bird nest. All right, I'm going to put some down here on this edge. Get a little bit heavier paint here. Man, it's about to do me in. water edge. Try and remove a little bit of that right there. I don't like those hard lines. And dark back there either. I want the, sh the shadow area to be just right here. I just want that area to be the dark area so I'm going to lay some paint in there and then take my mop brush and just pat that edge and kind of soften it and blend it out there. I want a little bit more of this under here. Okay, back here it needs to be a little darker. Just using a little corner edge of that brush. And I think... Ok, 
Okay, this, this still needs to be just, I know it's on the highlight side, but it's still kind of back in there. And I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to try and remove pretty much all the water out of my brush so I can have straight paint. Just tap some of that in there with the very corner of the brush. I have such a small amount on my brush, I'm going to work it with a little bit of water. And shade right here. Like that loopy loop thing there, curly curl, I guess what it is. You can go right here next to the next to the uh, cup and shade. Side of my brush. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's add just a bright little highlight on here. So I'm going to side load some white just on the one edge of the brush. create a hopefully a brighter edge here. Stay off our background. On the handle. Put some of this. I'm gonna bring my round brush back and do down there because that's gonna have to be highlighted. We'll see. I'm going to try not to have the nest spill over too much, but um, it might. So, okay, I'll put a little bit of a highlight out here on the front edge of the plate. This is all just with Snow White. this a little bit better. Not sure I helped that. I think I'll take my blue and put my blue back underneath there. much better. Alright, let me get my round brush because I'm going to highlight on this edge down here. So I'm going to pull some white across there for highlight. A little bit brighter on the handle. Right 
All right, so I'm just going to leave the highlight for now because um, we may have to come back and work on that highlight a little bit. But I think um, the cup and saucer is pretty much done. We're going to go work on our bird nest now because um, that's our main focal point. And um, the cup and saucer is just the supporting cast. So uh, we don't want to get too caught up in the cup and saucer, although we do want it to look very pretty. All right, let me zoom you in here. Now, when we're painting the inside of the cup here, I don't want you, this part right here, I want you to be as loose as possible about because we're just going to paint in down in the center of this cup with some antique gold. We're not going to come over the cup yet. We're staying down in the center. We're going to come over with some, this edge can be a little bit smooth but the rest of it just make it kind of choppy because it's the nest is going to come all the way up to this edge so we don't need anything really neat in there so just let it be sloppy and choppy and choppy over this edge. No, I'm undecided there. All right, to begin painting our grasses in, you're going to have on your palette antique gold, summer squash, and buttermilk. Now the antique gold we won't see at first, but uh, we'll be adding some of those in. So I'm going to take my antique gold. I dipped into antique gold, dipped into summer squash, and now I've got it right here mixed it. Just one to one mix. Just going to lighten up that antique gold just a little bit, okay? And we're going to come in here and just begin painting some of our grasses in. Now this part is going to be um, a little bit tricky for a pattern, so um, you want some to come over and around. We're forming our nest. We're being very organic and rough and jaggedy and don't worry too much about being neat about this we want it to be back here we might use a little bit more of the antique gold get that kind of out of the cup a little bit so we're just starting to form our nest. But we want to try and keep everything going in like a circular motion within the cup. So just when you feel like you've got enough of this color, because we can come back and repeat these colors you know, we're not locked into just doing it one time. So don't feel like you, you know, have to get it all perfect the first go around because it's not happening. This is still the undercoating and we are building on top of this. Okay, I'm just going to take my brush and wipe paint out. I'm not going to wash it because I want to use a dirty brush and I'm going to go into just the summer squash now and we'll start adding some of this color in here. Wiggles and jags and wiggles and jags. And each layer will start to forming the nest a little bit more. Have a little bit of this come over.
Keep it going. I think I'm going to add another color onto my palette here, which maybe I should have started with. I'm needing some darker color in here. So we're going to grab some burnt umber on our palette. I'm going to wipe the paint off of my brush. I'm going to go back into the antique gold and I'm going to mix some burnt umber with it. Actually, I'm going to take the burnt umber and mix a little bit of gold with it. So it's mostly burnt umber here with a little bit of gold in it. So I'm going to make a really dark golden color. And I want to put some of these in here. We really want it to be darker down here in the center. We're going to shade down in here to really make it darker, but we got to pull some of these darker pieces out. you to be as loose and organic as you can with this. Just a little bit of wiggle. You're creating like wavy lines and, and S's and Okay, we'll, we'll leave the uh, um, burnt umber and antique gold right there. This time I'm going to have to wash my brush off because I need to go back to lighter colors and I don't want that dark color to be in there. I know it looks like it's all poofed up, but trust me, when we, when we shade down in there and add our eggs, it's all going to settle down in. All right, with my clean brush, I'm going to go into some summer squash, load that in my brush, and some buttermilk, mix that. We'll do about an equal mix here. And we'll add some, some, start adding some lighter grasses in here. I have to add a little bit of water to my paint here. Get it to flow off the tip of my brush. Now with this layer, we're going to try and not make them as wiggly. Start start making them a little bit more um, just not straight, but sh following the shape that we have here in the cup. We can make them overlap, and we'll come back with some of our other colors and do the same. This is a layering process, this building a nest. Just like for the birds, it's a layering process. Few more in here. 
All right, I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to go back a step. And actually, I think I'm going to go back two steps and put some antique gold ones in here now. So I'm going to put some antique gold. Here. I'm not going to do very much of this because, you know, this is the, a darker color and I want it to not stay dark on the edges. Okay, wash my brush out. Now I'm going to do just some buttermilk, buttermilk ones in here. starting to form this nest now so this is where you want to start taking a little bit more care with your strokes squash in with it. Just kind of down in there. We're not really going to see that down in there once we put our eggs in. I'll wash my brush out there. Um, I think I'm going to do a few more buttermilk. I think I'm going to mix buttermilk and snow white together. And add some of those in here. need to put some of our dark ones back in so I just want those kind of those uh, buttermilk and white ones to be kind of where the lights gonna hit it a little bit more it might reflect some light over here let's go back and add some of our burnt umber and antique gold in there back in there we need some of these dark ones back Now your interpretation of a nest might be completely different from my interpretation of a nest. That is how we get our creative interpretations and it is not wrong. So, all right, I think that looks pretty good for our nest. We're gonna leave it there. We're gonna add our eggs next and then we'll come in and do some really fine shading and some really fine detail grasses on the top of this. Okay, before we transfer our eggs in here, I want to add a little bit of burnt umber down in here. So when we put our eggs in, it's already going to be a little bit darker down in the well of this. So this will just determine how deep your nest is down in there by um, putting that in there like that. Okay, I've got my eggs painted in here with two coats of shoreline. So now we're going to add some speckling on here. And I'm going to just add some dots, maybe not quite that big. I'm adding some uh, Victorian blue. I don't know anything about eggs, so I'm I'm just making my own eggs up here, so <laughs> if you want to be more exact with how eggs look, then you can research and do some of that. Okay, so that is with the uh, Victorian blue. And now we'll add some burnt umber specks on here. I try and don't let them get too big and get too out of hand because. 
and you'll just not be happy with it. Okay, and then we'll add a few white ones. Like I said, I don't know anything about eggs, so if these look like some of the weirdest eggs you've ever seen, then you can paint them in like you like to paint them. Okay, we're going to shade on these eggs. Let me get some water on my palette here. And we'll use some Victorian blue. I'm going to really work it into my brush to make it a little bit lighter. I'd rather start out a little lighter than be too dark. Now if you need to put your lines in for your egg separation, you can do that. over this one like that but you want to make sure this one's dry before you add that in there because you'll just remove paint if you don't right, we're going to go along this edge here paint and water into my brush here. And then this one here. Darken that up just a little bit by adding some burnt umber into my blue. Make sure it's dry. Let me mix a little bit more here. This is going to make almost a dirty blue here. to keep it more in the, the dark areas. A little bit of water. Alright, I'm gonna make some more. Okay, that looks pretty good for our shading there. And so we're going to highlight with white. And that's going to fade down in there. Repeat that white. That looks pretty good on our eggs there. All right, we're going to finish working our straw here. I think real quick before we do that, let's 
add a little bit of burnt umber. Down here, put a little bit around our eggs. Make it kind of choppy. Don't try to make it smooth. depth into the to the nest here. And I think I might take that burnt umber and just go across our eggs here. Set them down in there just a little bit. Now we're going to take our um, yellows that we used in the nest. So we've got antique gold, summer squash, cad yellow, buttermilk, and white. And shoreline. We're going to put some blue in our nest. And we're going to start creating a little bit more uh, detail to our nest here by bringing out and around some of these pieces of grass that will have it have just a little bit more character. So we're just going to go with each color and add some of this in here. Also put some burnt umber ones in here, so I think we're going to do that color next. Go back in with burnt umber, and we'll add some darker ones in here. Now remember, you have to thin your paint a little bit in order to get it to flow off of your brush nicely. too much of that in front. I might add just a, a few little strokes of this in front. Okay, let's go into our next color, which is Summer Squash. Get some bright yellow in here. And you could probably leave the summer squash one out completely if you wanted to. If that's not quite the yellow color you're wanting to go with. Color. You're just doing a few of each one of these lines. So, go into some cad yellow. This is a pretty transparent color, so it's not going to add a lot of uh, detail in here. So, just a few strokes. Then we'll go into our buttermilk. We're going to create some highlights back here. And on this edge. And then we'll go into our white. And I just dirty brush right into my white. And add some brighter. Go back to 
some antique gold. Put a little bit more of that in the front here. Stay up on the tip. Okay, now we're going to add a little bit of uh, color around this. So I'm going to take a, a wash of burnt umber, which is a lot of water and not very much paint. And we're going to add some of this in here. Darken our nest. And then we're going to take a wash of our antique gold. Wash some of that in. I'll go back to my burnt umber and add a little bit more of that in here. And then a little bit of white. Now let's shade underneath. Oh, we need to put some of our blue into our nest. We want to bring some of this color in into our nest. So just put some random, random little grasses in here. Erase that one. Too many. All right, we're going to shade underneath our nest, and we're going to do that with a burnt umber and Victorian blue mix. Work it into your brush where it's nice and sheer. And then we're just going to bring some of it underneath our nest. bit of a shadow underneath there. Maybe not quite as shadowy on that side. bit more burnt umber here. Okay, I'm going to white angle out because I think I need to add a little bit more white back in there. Just a few pieces of white. I feel like I got too much choppiness down here.
You can just play around and play around with this nest until you get it a look that you really, really like. So I'm gonna put a few more strokes of blue in here. Burnt umber. You can, you can keep layering this as much as you want as long as you don't let it grow and get so much bigger than the cup. We still want to try and contain it within that cup there. This is the um, Victorian blue with a little bit of burnt ember. Okay, I think that is going to finish our nest out there. I think I'm pretty happy with it. I think the eggs look really good. I think the shape of the nest is nice. So we are going to leave the nest there. We're going to shade underneath here and then I'm going to add some words up here. Okay, let's see about adding a little bit of shading under here. I'm still trying to de decide if I want to put any lettering on here or not. So I'm just taking some burnt umber and making a sheer color with it because I have water in my brush. The water is blending with the paint and that's how we're getting that sheer color there. again. Brush here. I had a lot of water in my brush so I could move that paint. Soften it out. shadow under there. And while I have this color, let's go ahead and go up here to the top and shade here.
Okay, and if you want to on your top, topper here, we could actually shade all along the bottom edges. Give this a little bit more depth. This is with Burnt Umber. It's, it's a very sheer color, so it, it uh, works really well for shading. Water. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I, I was going to put Welcome to Our Nest on here, but I'm not sure that I'm going to do that. I think I do maybe want to shade around the outside edges of this with burnt umber. Just a little aging up, and I'm undecided on the wording, so I'm going to let it set for a little bit and come back to it and see if I want to add any words to it or not. Um, right now I'm thinking no, but after I let it set for a little while I might change my mind on that and uh, want to come back and add like welcome or welcome to my nest. I haven't decided. This was the one I was originally going to put on there, but uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to like that. So, I'll be back. Okay, I have decided to come out with a few more uh, grasses that are a little wiggly and give this nest a little bit more texture. I did a few with some antique gold really wiggling them up and then I uh, have summer squash and mixed a little bit of antique gold in with it so we can just get some final little wiggles within our straw. I don't want it to be perfect. I don't want it to be contained so tightly. And it was getting a little bit too contained for me. So we're just letting it come out and be a little bit more messy and irregular like a bird nest really would be. So this is where you gotta just I'm using a detail liner brush, a 10-0 liner, and I'm laying some paint down in there. 
making some fat ones and then coming up off of, on the tip and just wiggling. Let some come up on top of our our eggs there. I think that gives it much better look and feel there. And you can go back in with some some buttermilk or some white ones um, and add a few higher, uh, a few brighter ones in here if if you want to. But just a few. We don't need uh, tons of that. So mix a little bit of white with the. That's pretty, that's pretty bright. I don't want to go quite that bright. There we go. I mixed a little bit of the summer squash in with it. And just wiggle in a few of those brighter ones. Just give a few highlights in there. So only do this if your nest got really tight. Mine was way too tight. I needed it to to be a little more free. Okay, so I think that's going to finish up our nest nicely. So I went ahead and transferred some letters on here um, that I want to paint in. It says, Welcome to our nest. And I hope those are straight. Let me check that they're straight. All right, let me zoom in here. I based in the letters with just white. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of floating at the bottom with our... Got my W a little bit big. With the Victorian blue. And just use a, a small flat brush like a size 8 or a, a quarter inch angle brush. I am using a, a number 6 um, curved flat, which this brush is no longer available. But if you have it, it's a great brush for floating with. back and repeat and darken whatever you need to. So we're just doing the lower half of the letters. Let's wide angle out here. And you can choose to add the letters or not add the letters. Um, I am trying to decide if I want to outline the letters. Let me do one real quick and see if I'm even going to like it with some burnt umber. I have to use my detail liner for this. Or you can let it dry completely and use some kind of permanent marker. But you have to make sure that you, if you use a permanent marker, that you um, make sure that you varnish your piece because uh, they can tend, especially if you're using a Sharpie, can fade over over the years. And uh, okay, I like it without the outlining, so I think. We shall pass on that. I'll remove 
that paint. And I think we'll just leave it the plain letters like that right there. Okay, I think that's going to finish this project here. Welcome to our nest. I might put a little bit of gold on top of the letters now that I lay it flat. So I'm going to get some antique gold. You can see how I like this on the tops. might blend in too much with the background. Mm, yeah, I think I'll leave it off. Alright. That is another color we will not choose to do. And we're just going to keep it the blue and white letters or no letters at all. to touch up some of my gold down here. Down here at the bottom I lost some of my swirls in the background so I'm just going to paint some in. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just need to get some of that bling back down underneath there. Okay, I might not have uh, stenciled hard enough when I pushed it on there, but uh, I think that's going to finish this project. Welcome to our nest with or without letters. That is totally up to you. I think it's a cute little project and I uh, hope you guys enjoy painting it. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video or uh, give me some comments if you want to see other types of videos and I will see you guys on the next one. Alright, so I have decided to add to this particular project that I painted. Now, I um, the video was completed for this one, but I decided to paint it on a much larger surface. Let me wide angle out just a little bit. And in this case, instead of the lettering, I've added a couple of birds on here. So I've painted this one in, so now we are going to uh, paint this one in right here. So we want to get I based him in with Shoreline, which is the blue that we used everywhere else. And the beak and the feet are a mix of uh, lamp black and white just to create a um, light to medium value gray. This looks like a pretty dark gray on the beak here. So we're going to um, shade and do some detail work on the feet and the beaks first. So I'm going to grab my 10-0 liner. I'm going to zoom you in here now. And on the feet, we're going to add some little lines like this. That's the back foot back there, and there's the leg. Okay, and then we're going to do some black lines on there. Oops, a little bit too much paint there. Probably still had a little bit of water in my brush from rinsing it out, so we're going to put some black ones on here. Back of the leg. And we're also going to take this black and do the little nail at the tip of our feet. Now we're going to shade with some lamp black. 
use a small brush for this so uh, go down to like a, a quarter or an eighth inch um, angle brush. I'm using a six um, chisel flat chisel chisel blender but um, I could go down to a four. I just happened to grab this one so I'll stick with it. So we did that there to separate that one from this one. Now we'll go down this back edge back here. body here. Do that and then we'll highlight with some white. Just on the very tip edge and the front of the leg here. So that's going to complete the feet. The feet are pretty easy. Um, we'll come up and pull, pull some of uh, the straw stuff um, up around the feet here. Okay, so let's move up to the beak here. And we're going to take our black. Work it into your brush so it'll be a nice color. And then inside the lower beak right here, we're going to paint that in black. Shade some black back here. We'll go along the bottom a little bit here and here. And then we're going to highlight with some white. edge where I put some of that dark. I didn't want it to come all the way to the tip of the beak, so. Take the water edge of my brush and remove a little bit of that. I didn't want it to be quite so. And I'll just make it a little bit brighter. And that should pretty much finish up the beak. Okay, the eye is going to be painted in with black. little tiny dot of white in there. And that will finish up the eye and we'll do the, the detail work around the eye here in a minute. Alright, let's start adding some of our shading on here. Um, we're going to take our Victorian blue and you can add a tiny bit of the shoreline. That's what we base coated the bird in here. And we're going to put some of this in all of our dark places. Just kind of work that out a little bit. We just want a little darkening of color there. We'll put some underneath the right there. And then we'll take 
this mix. And we're going to go underneath. This is why you want a small brush. We have a lot of small areas here. And we want to make sure that we fit our brush into all of our areas. So we're going to go underneath the wing. All the way up because this, this wing comes all the way past the tail there. Okay, and so we're going to go around each wing. So it's, it's probably a good idea if you don't have really dark lines so that. Uh, we can kind of cover them up a little bit. Go up on the very tip of the brush here. Going around this one. This is the. This will be kind of dark right through here, where the tail feathers meet the. Not the tip of that one, but through here we're just going to kind of streak some some lines. And through here we'll put a little bit. We need some around the eye, so just kind of tap some of that in around the eye. the tail feathers and we'll be repeating all of all of these steps with um, straight Victorian blue after this dries right now we've got that mix we've got a just a tiny little bit of shoreline in with our mix this wing back here. And it's actually got two little pieces to it. And we'll do some of this next to the beak. And a little bit down here. Just a little bit. Okay, that's all for that um, mix of color there. All right, I'm gonna wide angle, yeah, a little bit so I don't get you off camera. Let's go with some white on his breast. And we'll probably have to do it uh, two or three times to get it a pretty bright white here. a little bit of the shoreline with that white so it's not quite so stark and we'll start adding our highlights on here a little bit down here so we need the tip of the wing here inside these two and all of our little feathers that we kind of created here we'll get this color It's just a tiny little bit 
of shoreline mixed in with that white to take the white down from being quite so bright. Kind of like we did on the cup. So we're going to go along each one of these and the outer edge. Just kind of down the center a little bit. We're going to go along the back. I'm just going to kind of bring some down. We'll go along the top of the head. This will fade down in there pretty good. And then I'm just going to kind of pity pat that a little bit throughout the bird here. It's going to kind of lighten up the bird a little bit. And then don't forget your wing out here. And a little bit back in here. We're going to darken that back in there. All right. Alright, so that's got our initial highlights on there. So now we're going to brighten and deepen everything. Okay, we'll begin deepening with just straight Victorian blue. I need to put some of this back here on the little butt of the bird. I'm still just using this chisel brush here. But um, you use the brush that you can get into these areas comfortably. Okay, I'm not going to I'm not going to completely cover everything that, you know, the whole area that I just did. So this is just where you're just going to go in and darken some places. Just get everything to pop a little bit more. And then we'll come back and brighten again. Okay, it's looking pretty good. All right, let's uh, do our breast again and get it even brighter. I don't have hardly any water in my brush because I want this to be really bright and I don't want the water to, um, you know, make it fade away. So it's, uh, it's pretty much straight white. I'm going to mix that white and blue mix, but more white this time, less blue. I want it to be more on the white side, so we can go in here and add some highlights, some brighter highlights. Just kind of pity pat it everywhere. And then up your feathers. And I think that might finish off our bird. Very nicely. I think I might do the chest one more time and 
really want that to super bright. I think I'm going to put just some straight white on the tip of the tail. A little bit here and the tip of these wings out here. And a little bit on the head. Let's add some of our grasses on here. We're going to do antique gold and some summer squash and some white. I think will be, or light buttermilk, not white. <clears throat> and um, don't need to do very many. We just want to make it look like the bird is actually sitting on the nest and not floating above it. So your liner, and we're just going to wiggle some grasses. <clears throat> with these colors. And, and just a few light buttermilk. No need to wash your brush each time, just go into each color and I'm going to do a few more summer squash ones here. Maybe antique gold needs to be a little bit darker. I think we might shade around his feet with some burnt umber. That would probably be a good idea there. Might brighten up the dot in his eye as well. Okay, I think that looks much better. And brighten up the dot in the eye, I think. I'm going to go in and erase all of my graphite lines here. shadow underneath our bird here. I'm going to take my um, burnt umber and Victorian blue and make a dirty blue and just I want to set this guy on the ground here. We don't want him floating in the air. Maybe just a touch of a shadow. Oops. Paint on the wrong side of my brush here. We're just going to go with some burnt umber. Right underneath here. And 
just a touch of a brighter highlight. pretty good. I think I'm gonna leave it right there. Let me wide angle out. I'll take this down and that looks super super cute. I really like that. I'm gonna erase my graphite lines and put the two pieces side by side so you can see them. And I think that is super, super cute with those birds on there. And then here's this one. I love this one too. Not a fan of the lettering after I got it done, but um, it turned out super cute. Now up here in the heart, I painted that black inside there um, because uh, the ones that I can get now have the heart cut out shaped like that. So um, it, it would be open. But I think this is cute as can be. I love it, love it, love it. And uh, it was a super fun project to paint. I hope that you uh, really get to paint this one with the birds. So, um, you guys, thank you so much for uh, watching my videos. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks.